underestimate the power of dreams and the influence of the human spirit. With this quote, I heartily welcome our next speaker speaker for this event, Dr. Rubaika Fidvi. She's a skilled, ethical, committed, compassionate, and a client-centered physician and psychotherapist having over 10 years of work experience with diverse client population in inpatient, outpatient, university, and prison settings. Dr. Fidvi is proficient in conducting both individual and group psychotherapy from an anti-oppressive, strength-based, inclusive, and culturally informed perspective. She is also a national certified counselor in the United States and was a lead trainer for the training of trainers for cognitive behavioral interventions. She also enjoys volunteering and is affiliated with the Toronto Humane Society, Daily Bread Food Bank, and Homeless Connect Toronto organizations. We welcome you, ma'am, and over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Shana, for the gracious introduction. And it's been so lovely to be on this platform and listening to all you wonderful women. Uh, thank you so much for having me today. Uh, I'm so excited to be part of this, uh, this movement, this event. Uh, you know, women empowerment is something that's really important to me. Uh, I can, you know, through my uh, time today, hopefully I can share things that have helped me empower myself. Uh, that's a big thing uh, that I, uh, preach and I uh, believe in I when I work with my clients and I'm so glad that I actually have my talk after John I because a lot of what John I spoke about I'm going to be kind of uh, expanding emphasizing as well uh, in my talk with you guys um, so I have basically when I think about empowerment there are three principles that I personally believe in and as I said when I work with clients these are three things that I emphasize so the first most important thing for me is practicing authenticity you know for for many years of my life I was very inauthentic you know I did not know who I was I was living according to the expectations of other people uh, but you know in the recent past I decided to you know walk on this path of authenticity really get to know who I I am and when I work with clients I really ask people to introspect reflect take a good look at yourself and basically understand what your own personal values are um John I talked about contentment and I believe in that as well and we are truly content when we are living in alignment with our values so being authentic also involves being vulnerable I know, shocker, right? Like when you say vulnerable, people don't want to feel vulnerable. But I can tell you that there has been so much of freedom for me in being authentic and being vulnerable. Those interactions with other people are more genuine when we are truly being ourselves. So my first principle, as I said, is being authentic. Um, the other thing that I have is my mantra of Find your passion, fulfill your purpose. I think John, I talked about that as well. And I think when you're truly authentic, uh, you can introspect, see really what speaks to you and follow that path. The second thing I wanna talk about is being able to um, free yourself from self-limiting beliefs. I think a lot of us kind of stay shackled because we are, we, we are buying into those self-limiting beliefs. So three of the beliefs that I believe held me back uh, the first thing is approval seeking. So as women, <laughs> you know, uh, I feel like we are constantly trying to please everybody in our lives. And I think the most important person that we need to think about pleasing is ourself. So first thing, stop being an approval seeker. The second thing that I realize, and this is from my own personal life as well, is being shackled to the past. Right. So whatever happened in the past, that's in the past. As I tell people that, you know, when you're driving, where do you want to focus? Do you want to focus like on what's gone behind or what's right there in front of you? Because if you're focusing on the rear view mirror all the time, you're probably going to land up with an accident. Right. So you want to be focusing ahead. Yes. Definitely. We want to look at the past from time to time for lessons learned. But again, living in the present looking towards the future. Another self-limiting belief, I, I, and, and I would say uh, for me, I'm a recovering perfectionist. So again, now let's talk a little bit about the expectations that one has of themselves, right? When your expectations are sky high, when your expectations are unrealistic, 
right? We're setting ourselves up for failure, right? So be really realistic about what you want in your life. That way we can create more realistic goals to move towards, um, you know, whatever it is that fulfills you, whatever it is uh, that is your purpose in life. Um, I like how Gauri from, from, from before talked about uh, identifying your strengths. And I think, uh, you know, it's really important for us to identify, acknowledge, and celebrate our strengths. There are going to be so many moments in life, um, you know, when we don't feel as capable. And I think it's really important to look within yourself and know what is, you know, what, what, what value you have. Because when you identify and celebrate your strengths, no matter what um, situation you're faced with, whatever challenge you're faced with, you can pick yourself up and you can keep moving forwards. That's another thing that I always tell people as well. Momentum is super, super important. And that momentum doesn't have to be running all the time. A lot of times I tell people, life is a marathon. Life is not a sprint. So if all I could do today was just get up and put one foot in front of the other, that is good enough. That is good enough. Um, so definitely unshackling yourself from those self-limiting beliefs. And again, as you know, we're talking about uh, women empowerment. Uh, pay attention to the people you're surrounding yourself with. Right? You're gonna hear a lot of voices there. So I choose to surround myself with people who are positive, who are uplifting. I want to filter that in, and I want to filter out those voices that are bringing me down. Because hey, guys you're gonna have those kind of people in your life, right? So the third thing that I believe in, and uh, you know, I'm really guilty of not doing this, although I preach about it all the time, is being truly compassionate to yourself, guys. As women, we're compassionate to everybody, but we've got to practice self-compassion and self-love because we fulfill so many roles, right? Uh, we're daughters, we're mothers, we're sisters, right? But we are us too right? So we got to love ourselves. That's super, super important. And that brings me to one of my favorite topics to talk about as well, which is self-care. Paying attention to your physical, emotional, and your spiritual needs. So physically making sure you're eating well, you're sleeping well, you're getting enough of exercise, you're engaging in activities that bring you joy. When we talk about emotional self-care, what I would like to talk about, and I think John, I talked about it as well. <laughs> I'm referring a lot back to her speech, uh, but gratitude. What I really believe in is practicing an attitude of gratitude. So no matter what happens day to day, you always feel content and you're always appreciative of what you have. Another practice of mine is affirmations. As I talked about before with those self-limiting beliefs, it's really, really important to continue to know that you're valued that you matter. One of my favorite affirmations is I can and I will, right? Um, so, you know, basically practicing spiritual uh, self-care, meditation, journaling, whatever it is that, you know, gives you that peace of mind. So if you're authentic, if you're able to, um, you know, free yourself from the self-limiting beliefs if you're able to practice self-compassion and self-love and self-care. I'm sure that is the way that you can empower yourself. And as women, we need to be lifting each other up so that we can build better communities. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. And I hope that there was something that you could take out of this talk today. Thank you. Thank you for giving your time for this event, ma'am. Thank you for sharing your mantra with us. Find your passion and fulfill your purpose. And making us realize that most importantly, we need to be compassionate towards ourselves. Thank you for filling us with positivity, ma'am. Moving further with the event, our next...